everybody, and welcome back to another great edition of my Guru Room Show. For the Guru Room Show today, I got a really awesome guest, and he's an actor, and his name is Chance Hurst Hurstfield. If I said your last name wrong, I apologize. I'll have you say when you come on, and we're going to talk to him all about his, the the stuff that he's done in film and television. He's also he he also did a lot of of voice voice work too in a couple anime shows and he's been in tv series and films he was in he was in something with mel gibson so he's done it all at such a young age and i'm really looking forward to chatting with him about his his acting career i am rocco cross i am the host that stutters i am the host of the guru room and my interview with chance will be coming up very soon this is my guru room and as always welcome to my nightmare so stay tuned is the okay. audio good? The mic's good? Oh my god, yeah, you sound you sound great. Awesome. <laughs> so um thanks for coming on the show. Welcome, welcome to Gru, and and I'm really, really happy for you to be on here. So thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Definitely, bud. Well, the first thing I want to ask you before I get into anything is I, I like how do you say your your last name? So I first I deal. say Hurts. Yeah, you're all good. Sometimes I forget how to say it too. It's not your fault. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> and and how's everything going? Are you having a good? I don't know if it's nighttime where you're at or not yet. But are you having a good night? Four thirty p.m. I'm having oh, it's four thirty. Okay. I just watched a great movie. Life is good. I got the energy up. It's perfect, man. Sweet bud, sweet. Yeah. So. <laughs> the first thing I want to start out asking you is typical question I usually start out with is like, what drew you to want to act? Like, when did your passion start for it? Oh man, I uh, I started acting when I was four. I did my first movie. Oh my god! I was yeah, well, it was uh thirteen years ago, and uh, my dad is a music producer and my stepmom's a singer. So uh, wow. because of them, yeah, because of them, you know, I kind of grew up in the entertainment industry, and they have a lot of friends on the film side as well. And uh, one of my dad's good friends, Maureen Goodwill, uh, there was a breakdown for a kid in, in, in a TV movie called Innocent with Alfred Molina and Bill Pullman and Richard Schiff. And she asked if I wanted to like go for an audition. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand the concept. I just thought, oh, I'm going to be on TV. That sounds fun. So uh, I did it in my first audition. And by the grace of gods, I don't know how it happened, but I booked it. And uh, I went to set. I, I remember having an amazing experience. I, I'd be lying if I told you I remembered all of it because it was 13 years ago. But I remember well, having well, fun. Well, yeah, you were only four. Yeah, I remember <laughs> having fun, and that's what matters. And from there, I uh, she signed me on as a as a as an actor to her agency. I, I kept auditioning, and I got lucky, man. <laughs> I've just been on a luck streak for the past 13 years. Honestly, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> Wow, that that is that is a very young age to start yeah, start, start was, doing uh, and start I acting and stuff. I was barely taking my first steps and already on camera. So I I really grew up with it. I don't know the difference between growing up not acting, and growing up acting, but as yeah. far as I'm concerned, it's like winning the lottery. It's the best thing in the world. Well, well, yeah, because you know you're 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 in a really great world like you know whenever you do like film or television or voice voice work like you know you get out of the modern everyday world and you go into like a completely different world a completely no different mindset right you, there's no better way to grow up oh my god yeah it's like it's like Definitely amazing like you get it to really play is. character and oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i uh I, a lot of my favorite actors i i would watch interviews of them when they were young and you know they talked about how when they started out acting, they were like, if I, I could do this for a living, you know, life is perfect. And that's kind of how I feel about it. I get to play pretend for a living, quite literally. Yeah, yeah. And especially for a kid growing growing up, like every when you're a, a kid, you always want to be someone like you pre pretend to be a superhero or yeah, an athlete. And, and you pre, you got to pretend to be like an actor yeah. and you became exactly. one. <laughs> Dude, I was like seven years old I would go out in public wearing like Darth Vader costumes or superhero capes and I'd go out on the street in civilization as if I was a superhero or Darth Vader until an embarrassingly old age like I shouldn't be in the second grade showing up as Batman 
but uh, I guess uh, <laughs> in a weird way, I was preparing myself for the future. I was preparing myself for what was to come. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's like it, I was method acting. That's that's what I'm. Yeah, about. exactly. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, you you put it you put it out there in the world so you could probably now now since you put it out there like you you could get like a marvel exactly. role or dc yeah, the world or, knows you know. the world's like okay you've been wanting this for a while i think we'll send it your way hopefully yeah, exactly. Fingers crossed. i'd love to play spider-man <laughs> nice yeah <that's laughs> and how was how was your experience like working on ghost wars Ghost Wars. Wow. I haven't had a question about that one in a while. Uh, funny you <laughs> ask. Um, recently, I, I just reconnected with uh, with the showrunner of Ghost Wars, Simon Barry, through. through oh, through sweet. Season. He has a new show. But Ghost Wars was, yeah, that was a while ago. I think I was 10 or 11. Oh, uh, wow. I, I don't want to spoil anything, but I had an exorcism on that show. And that was like the time of my life. I got an exorcism by Vincent D'Onofrio with a oh, yeah. loaf in the background behind the camera. I got to say words I wasn't allowed to say. I was living life. That was a crazy show. I remember sitting in the makeup <laughs> chair beforehand. Like, uh -huh. you know, it was a ghost towards the intense ghost wars. But they, like, you know, paint my face white. And I remember sitting there. And, and the makeup chair was honestly the ruling part of it all like i have so much respect for actors who have to completely transform for their roles and like sit in the makeup chair for hours because i have adhd and, and okay. i actually had it when i was young and so that for me was a challenge but overall shooting that show i'd never done like you know a, a sci-fi kind of show like that so the experiences i got to have i remember once there's a scene where i had to be like choked i was like choking myself but holding oh my god up against the wall and i was like how are they going to shoot that and they had the wall like laying flat on the ground and i was laying down on it and they had the camera above my head and i just remember thinking i really hope this camera doesn't fall down and crush me because that wouldn't be fun but <laughs> overall that was like an unforgettable experience that show i was young but i still remember the highlights of it wow i, I mean anytime you get to play like a like a, a scary role like that oh, I, I mean God, absolutely and an exorcism like like you're you're like it was like the 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 ex the exorcist film with yeah, Lynn, exactly. I, had to, I, Lynn Blair. I had to say some latin words i was like i know spanish but i don't know latin so let's try and figure it out it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's awesome i love it <laughs> and and you also like how 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 was it to how was it like to to actually be in like a lead role opposite of an icon like mel gibson in fact <laughs> like oh to god. work with him dude that was no. i think that's the most, yeah that's definitely one of the, the most favorite experiences i've ever had um on a, on a set for sure i remember when i first auditioned for the role um the uh the nelms brothers ian and nesham nelms they wanted to have mm -hmm. this me because they thought i was actually like you know a jerk because apparently they thought i was a little too good at playing an antagonist and so they wanted to just oh. I wasn't gonna make the set a living hell for everyone uh so I think that's funny I took that as a really big compliment I just was like okay <laughs> you know uh but that was a great experience and and what was great about the Nums brothers is they really make you feel included in all of it like they were okay. showing the storyboards before a scene you know I I was a kid so you know it wasn't real but they were asking for my advice on how to light the shot I'm like, I think about a light there, a light there, you know, a light there. I don't know what I was saying, but I felt included. And of course, Walton Goggins and 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 Mel Gibson. Oh my God, Mel is an intense actor, man. Mel is like, he, you feel his presence in a scene. Like, Definitely. even if it's your coverage and he's behind the camera, you feel his presence. You know that there is an Oscar winner <laughs> opposite of you. I was, uh, I'm not my man, I was crapping breaks that that whole scene but to work with walton walton was, walton's also a really strong actor and recently okay. i've been watching a lot of tarantino movies the hateful eight stuff like that and i see mm -hmm. Walton, and i'm like wow i got to work with that guy that's pretty cool and and of course i'm a big fan of the show invincible and he plays uh cecil yes. and so that's yes. pretty cool as well just, just seeing his cameos here and there and, and to say i've been able to work with him i'm like yeah that's pretty awesome 
Yeah, well, I, I was like, damn, I see you actually got to work with Mel Gibson. Like, that's yeah. amazing. Mel, Mel is, <laughs> and, and he's funny. Like, off camera, he's a really funny guy. He's nice. And 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 when they did the whole press junket for the movie, he mm -hmm. asked to do it with him, which was mind blow. Like, I got to do Good Morning America with Mel oh Gibson God. at, like, 13 years old. It was the craziest thing ever. So I'm very grateful that, you know, he brought me on for that opportunity because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do yeah. that, all, but, but thankfully he did, and I'm very happy he did because those are moments I'm never gonna forget. So he's a great guy. I'm happy I got oh, to work with him. That that is that's sweet, man. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw early on when when you first started to to act, you you did like a lot of 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 shows. You did a lot of 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 voice voice work. Yeah, a lot of voice work. And how like when you're doing like all these different like voice shows and doing voice work for them like how do you know like what voice to use for each character like how do you find your voice and prepare it and all that stuff when i was a kid i had a really raspy voice so luckily you know i had to you know just i, I just showed up with my normal voice and it was perfect i did a show called dorg van dango where the character is actually older and i played dorg van dango so they had to pitch my voice down for it which was okay. the first experience i've had like that but I mean, for most of the shows, except for Team Zenko Go, um, that show, I, I kind of did like a little bit of a nasally thing. Since then, I've gone through puberty, so I sound nothing like the original. <laughs> but uh, I just use my normal voice. And it's funny because my mom's a preschool teacher and uh, and all of the kids in her class watch Paw Patrol. And I was in Paw Patrol. And so she's always telling the kids, that's Harold Humdinger. That's that's my son from Paw Patrol. And then they hear my voice and they're like, that's not Harold. Yeah, yeah. Harold's now six years older. Harold has to shave every morning. It's not the same. But uh, but yeah, voiceover is a lot of fun. It, it's like a whole different realm of acting. And I think it almost helps in terms of live action because you really get mm -hmm. to practice speech patterns and voice inflections and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, actors like Daniel Day-Lewis make you know, their speech patterns and his voice inflection, like a signature point of every role. He has something different for every character he plays. So being oh, okay. able to play voiceover roles really helped me get comfortable with trying new things with my voice that could easily transcend to the live action realm. Thankfully, I haven't had to, uh, you know, not, not thankfully, sadly, I haven't had to change my voice for any roles yet, but I'd love to do a live action role like that where I just have to completely transform myself into uh, nice. another person voice face all of it. <laughs> i think that's that's the best thing ever the more different from me the character is the better in my opinion oh yeah definitely cool. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you ever like do do a voice for a video game yet or is, is, is that, is that no, something you want to do I, I had my first audition for video game a while ago um didn't hear back oh well uh that's that's how it is but it was uh it was really interesting because i'd never I never auditioned for a video game before, and I didn't know what that process was like. And it was honestly the same as auditioning for, um, you know, for 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 a, for an animated show or an animated movie. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I love playing video games, and I always wonder, like, because you know, the characters will just talk at random points of the game, like they'll just say things, and I always wonder, like, how long are you in that booth saying uh -huh. phrases and sentences that no one will ever hear because they won't go <laughs> to that side mission? And I always wonder, that must be stressful. So I always make it a point to go do all the side missions in every game I play because I need the nice. voice actors to be heard, every line to be heard. But uh, I have a friend, Malia Baker, who was in the Avatar video game recently. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Frontiers of Pandora, I think. I okay, wanna okay. That. I want to play that just to hear her voice, but... Uh, I should ask her what that experience was like because I feel like that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, right. Exactly. I, I, what, so, so you're you're a big video game guy. What kind of what kind of video games do you like playing? Like, what system? Right you now, got? I uh, I used to play video. Okay, over quarantine, it was unhealthy, man. I was like eighteen hours a day. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> then I took about a year of a break after. Okay. <laughs> cleanse it all out of my system you but, have to you know, cleanse the gaming yeah. out <laughs> Recently, it's like you know thankfully in the past you know since the strike ended it's just been audition after audition after audition and, and my brain has never been so scrambled and i love it that's the best thing in the world but between that you know i'm i'm reading a book on acting i'm, I'm watching movies but on the off chance i have you know a little bit of time i'm like i just want to sit back and play a video game cyberpunk uh spider nice. 2 Stuff like that, you know. I'm I'm really trying to be uh, cyberpunk right now. 
Okay, okay. I've yeah, played that game. Side missions done, though. Yeah, do you like it? Yeah, it's really I'm trying really to get all the side missions like done before I get to the final mission. Because like I said, I want to make sure every voice line is heard. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, what, like, the role you're probably most most known for is Danny Dixon. And, yes, sir. like, when you were on the show, like, fans watched you grow, like, from, you know, from, I, I mean, they actually watch, watch you grow. Like, you, you were yeah. a kid, and, then, and I mean, you're, you, you know, and then you, you, you grew a lot. And how, how was it like? A whole lot of puberty. Yes. A whole lot of puberty. <laughs> so, so how how was it like growing up on that show? Like growing growing up with the actors, the fans watching you grow grow up. It is the best experience in the world. There's not a better show I could have grown up on because we had like a tight knit family. You know, from the pilot mm-hmm. to uh, to the final episode. I don't know how many episodes we did. I'm not gonna lie, there was over a hundred for sure. Um, but <laughs> from the pilot to the very end the cast never changed honestly like it it yeah. you know people came in and out but relatively it stayed the same and i think that's great because i got to build relationships with you know each and every person and 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 lizzie green who plays sophie my sister on the show i call her my sister now and she calls me her brother like she's doing a new show right now and and she'll facetime me and be like oh this is my little brother i'll be like oh i didn't know you had a little brother and she's like well he's not really my little brother but he was for six years so we're like real siblings and and james wrote <laughs> yeah. and- who plays Gary words cannot explain the impact he had on me as an actor. And as a person, I got to build like, you know, he's like an uncle to me and Romney Malco and Stephanie Shostak, who is my set mom. I call her mama. Her contact in my phone is mama Steph. Everyone on that show is like became family. And, and they're all, you know, they all came from big projects. Everyone was already like, you know, this is what they do. They're good at it. They create characters. I'm 10 years old. I'm yeah. still trying to memorize my lines. And 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 I remember vividly in season one, Stephanie comes up to me and she's like, what do you think we were doing before the scene? And I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean before the scene? She's like, I mean, Danny and, and Delilah, you know, they walk into the scene, but, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a tension they have. What do you think they were doing beforehand? And in that moment... Oh my God. It was like, I had an epiphany. It was like a whole, my eyes were open to a whole new world. I was like, wow, these are humans. Like I'm not just yeah. playing a character. I'm inhabiting a person. Oh yeah, of course. And, 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 and these revelations were like weekly, monthly, everything. Every time I showed up to set, something new was going on. And it was awesome because typically on those big ensemble shows, you know, there's always like, I've heard stories where there's always, you know, someone who kind of hangs around by themselves. They don't really partake in the group activities. The show mm-hmm. was not like that. The show was not like that at all. Sometimes when we had to do big group scenes, we would talk too much and then wouldn't be able to make it play <laughs> because of it. Like, we were all so close. Everyone was so nice and familiar with each other that it, it was it was awesome. And, and that show definitely, you know, did some big numbers because I have experiences where I'm yeah. walking down on the street and I hear Danny. And because Danny, I, what's up? You know, I turn around. She's like, "You're Danny, right?" I'm like, "How you can recognize me as Danny when I haven't shaved in three days and and I look like you know someone out of the Hateful Eight is beyond me." But yeah, I, I I'm Danny. And then I start thinking, I'm like, "Wow, I gotta shave before I go out more because people see me as Danny." Yes, yeah. I'm looking rough right now, man. I'm looking like I'm best acting for for a homeless character. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you'd be walking down the street or in Star Star Starbucks or getting yeah. something to eat, and yeah. and they'll and they'll be like, "Hey, Danny, they, yeah, you, Danny. They, they won't call you your real name." <laughs> There's been some Atticus recently from Good Boys. I haven't heard that one in a long time. I'm like Atticus, okay. I, I'm like I was 11, four foot three in that movie with my hair slicked back, wearing an Obey shirt. I don't know how you can spot that, but good for you, man. That's that's impressive. <laughs> I, it is. It is funny though. Like when fans watch a show, like 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 you started out. You say you were you were around ten, and yeah. like say by season three, and you're a teenager now, and 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 you like get taller. Your face changes. Yeah. You see like you see the oh, facial yeah. hair now, yeah. 
and it, it, it's like weird how like you see this character from like season one and season three he looks like completely different <laughs> people always told me like you know we watch you grow up on that show and i was like oh yeah yeah i started when i was young i you know, finished when i was 16 the pilot i did when i was 10 we watch the first episode compared to the last I'm like these are two different people they really <laughs> did watch me grow up on the show and 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 that's just comparing the first to the last episode you take yeah. every episode in between it's like you guys were there with me through every stage of puberty i didn't even <laughs> puberty. puberty hit me that's how badly that's i changed from one episode to the next i think at the end of season one to the start of season two it was maybe the start of end of season two to the start of season two. i don't know one of those seasons the last scene of one season and the first scene of the next was supposed to be continuous and I happened to hit puberty between that season. So I was about a foot taller with a deeper voice and a little bit of stubble. Yeah. I just remember, I'm like, this is not going to match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I ruined the whole sequence. I ruined it. I'm going to get fired. It's going to be terrible. I, I was so, I was like, oh, God, it had to be puberty. You, you're like, oh. Just just blame it on that. Don't blame me. Exactly. I can't control it's that. My fault. It, it happens Mother to Nature. every guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I They started shaping me when I was 11 on that show. Like, I bloomed way too early, man. I should not have been 11 shaving. My dad tells a story all the time because we went to the makeup trailer and all of a sudden they pull out the razor and they're shaving oh me. Oh, my God. And they're like, you know, he has stubble. He has to look 11. He doesn't look 11. He looks 47, divorced two times with three kids in college. It's not going to work. So, uh, you... so, yeah, they were shaving me for a while on that show. Oh, my God. Like, like you you really had, had stubble yeah. at, at, yeah. at, at, at 11? At 11, there was enough on my face for them to have to shave. And, you know, I, they didn't shave me frequently. But, you know, I did a show called Wild Cards. Uh, mm-hmm. And they had to shave me every morning. And so that's when I was like, okay, now I'm at that stage. And well, yeah, yeah, that's 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 as far as the makeup goes now. You know, they cover up a few pimples here and there because for some reason that's unavoidable for me. And they do the shaving, and I'm like, all right, my my chin stings a little, but I'll be fine. <laughs> that's how it is. What are you gonna do? <laughs> exactly. Hey, that's life. You, you know, that's mm-hmm. life. Life of a teenager. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. Put it this way: if if my biggest stress in the world is shaving i'm considering myself very lucky <laughs> yeah that's true you're right about that yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> and when you were on the show playing danny like what what scene do you think you had the most the most fun doing Ooh, you come to mind there was one scene there was a food fight scene Fuck. and now if you put three or if you put like 10 people in a room together who have previously spent three years together five days of a week six days a week and just talking all the time and you give them a bunch of pizza ingredients and you tell them to throw it at each other oh my god i I'm, i feel so bad for the people who had to clean the set after i had i don't know what wardrobe i think wardrobe had to go buy me new wardrobe because the amount of stains i had they gave me like a white shirt oh my I was god like, that's, oh my. that's not gonna help it was you know, pizza sauce all over me. I had a pepperoni on my eye that, you know, literally curled at me. It's like, what are you, a baseball player? How do you have that much power in your throat? I thought it was going to cut my head, but that was, a, that was a, a, a really fun scene. Honestly, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the heavy scenes were really mm-hmm. fun simply because getting to watch these actors in action and see, you know, see them work it out in their head and then go in and just deliver such a powerful, powerful performance. It's really fun. And, and most scenes with James Roday, because what he does is when it's your coverage, he'll spit out something so insane and obscure that has nothing to do with the scene and oh my he God. laughing. I remember one scene, I was laughing so hard, I was rolling on the ground crying. I was in tears because of how hard he made me laugh. I don't even remember what he said. <laughs> I think it was something so dumb. He was like, Danny, have you ever been in a Turkish prison? And it a was Turkish like, prison. About, like, me coming out at school or something like that. And he's, Danny, have you ever been in a Turkish prison? It's like, are you a dong arbiter? Do you work in the art of the arbitration of dongs? It's just so <laughs> many things that he would blurt out that that stuck with me for some reason. I still remember the dong arbitration <laughs> proclamations. They stuck in my head. And, uh, and I can't think of a better way to think of James than dong arbitration. Because oh, why? my God. Oh, yeah. 
That is so fun. <laughs> 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 And you mentioned earlier a few minutes ago about about wild cards, and I don't know if your episode is out or not yet. Like, is there anything you could say about it? I was um, I did a little bit in episode one. Episode seven is a really a really good episode for my character. Um, I don't know if I can talk too much about it just because that one hasn't aired yet. But yeah. overall, the show was a really cool experience, and and it was really fun because this was the first role I've gotten where I haven't had to an audition. Uh, I didn't really, audition. yeah, it was an offer, which was crazy because i was thinking about it i'm like you guys are really putting a lot of trust in a 17 year old because you haven't seen what i, I could show up and this character could have a chechenian accent and you know just i could do so many weird things with it but you're putting your trust in the fact that i'm not gonna do that uh so it was really cool and and you know working with giacomo Gianotti, who you know came fresh off of uh off of Grey's Anatomy which mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of the show before but a million seasons nah, in a nah, trip I, I, I never heard of yeah, that show yeah, it, no. it's small like, little small little show a little indie show uh, yeah it's a little he, indie show it was only yeah, out of season yeah he's a, he's a really great actor and he's very nice he's very hospitable and he kind of reminds me of James Roday in that way so it's very mm -hmm. fun to do these scenes with him and you know after I rapped he wrote me a very nice letter and Vanessa Morgan of course who yes you know, of course. small show riverdale i don't know if you've heard of it you know, just <laughs> a few few viewers every every now and then a but few, uh, that's it i didn't get to do as many scenes with her sadly but the 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 little bit of time i did get to work with her she's very nice she's very hospital and again a great actress it's like i'm growing up and i'm surrounded by these professionals and they're all teaching me things without I even realize yeah. all they're doing is saying their lines and then i pick up on everything i'm, I'm like a sponge which is great because i think it's the best way to learn oh my god yeah yeah, can't think of a better way to learn how to act than Mel Gibson screaming in your face. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to do it. It is. <laughs> than him pulling you by your hair on the ground. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Just no need to act there. I am scared, man. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for me, growing up, I was a huge fan of nine nine. Of nine oh two one oh, and I see Jason Priestley is actually in Priestley, yeah. in the series too. And yeah. when I saw, that, I was like, "Oh man, I have to watch this show." I said, "I said Brandon That's Walsh it. is in it." <laughs> That's it, dude. I I'm so sad I didn't get to meet him. I was like absolutely crushed by the fact that I didn't get to meet him because I remember seeing the costume. I was like, Jason Priestley. Jason Priestley, like, yeah. Jason Priestley is like, what's going on here? Uh, I didn't get to meet him. Oh, okay. One day. One day it'll work out. One day. Exactly. <laughs> and I was I was reading on on online that you had a scene or a video. So it, it, I, I, I'm gonna ask you, was it a scene or like a, a video that went viral and you had like a oh, billion man. views or something like that? <laughs> wow, you did research. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh the package. Yeah. The, the package, uh, okay that that no one under the age of 42 should see this needs a whole new ranking in in the in the age system uh yeah that one continuously every month i see i get tagged in a new post with with a new insanely obscure amount of likes on it of the scene where you know they have my drone and i say some things i shouldn't be saying at the age of 10 and uh and then I get scarred for life, and 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 people love it, and and I can't think of a better way to entertain people than than that. If you've seen the movie The Package, you know what I'm speaking of. If you haven't, watch it at your discretion. It's uh, it can get pretty graphic at times, but I'm sure. I, I think it's hilarious that when I die one day, that's gonna be my legacy. That's exactly. gonna be remembered by everyone. It keeps popping up. And don't get me wrong, I love it. But I'm just thinking, there's only so many people that can see this before it mm -hmm. hits the wrong audience and people get sick of it and people start coming after me and coming <laughs> after the producers and my parents. And I've seen those comments where I'm like, you know, or, or people are like, you know, what parents would let their kids do this? And I always reply back. I'm like, yeah, shame on them. How dare they? And I remember commenting on one post. I was like, this is so sad to see another child actor lost oh, in no. the world of Hollywood. 
and people are like, finally, someone's speaking up for this kid, you know, justice for him. And I'm like, if you just pressed on my profile, <laughs> you'd see the irony of what you're saying to me right now. But oh, well, you know, I think it's great. I get a good laugh out of it. So I don't care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and you're also big on TikTok too. So is there like any video that you did for TikTok that that was like fun for you? Like it was more I've, more fun out of the rest of them? I've uh yeah I, I I've li- for for a few weeks I was on like a TikTok kick and I think I posted okay like TikToks. Um, but the re- reason I did that was because the the clip from the package also was going viral on TikTok. It wasn't just Instagram now. It was TikTok. And people were like, who is this kid? And I was like, well, you know, I figure I might as well post a few videos. So, you know, yeah. people see it, they'll, they'll know it's me, which I don't know what my thought process was there. Because, again, I'm like a decade older. So I don't, yeah, I don't exactly. think you'd be able to recognize it. It's night and day. But at the very least, I have some videos posted on TikTok. But I haven't done any, like, crazy challenges or, or anything like that. I, I, I think it'd be fun. I, I'd like to get into that. But I, I haven't yet. I haven't okay. Experienced- yeah. <laughs> so what do you drink is that is that an energy drink it is a perrier sparkling oh water. it's perrier because, okay <laughs> yeah because uh because i like tasting tv static as i've been told uh listen i i i get a lot of slack for for drinking sparkling water but i have still water right here you know i get the best of both worlds i don't need to slack guys i'm on both teams here do you go do you go i like it i like yeah it. exactly <laughs> And when 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 you're not doing roles and acting, what do you like doing during your free time? Oh boy, anything that relates to acting. It's like okay. it's, it's my whole life, man. I've been reading The Intent to Live by Larry Moss, um, oh. which is an acting book. And you know, he's he studied under Stella Adler and Sanford Meisner, who were like two of the originals. And you know, he trains with Helen Hunt, Toby Maguire, Jim Carrey, Leonardo oh, DiCaprio. Damn. If you know me, you know DiCaprio is is my favorite. He's my phone case. Oh Ooh. wow! Yep. So I'm a, I'm a big DiCaprio fan. And I oh know really? A lot of, I know more than I should know about DiCaprio. But this guy, you know, he trains with DiCaprio, Hillary Swank, uh, Christian Slater, like just a big time a big time coach. And DiCaprio talks about how he was intimidated the first time he trained with this guy. Really. Like, DiCaprio is like you gotta be you gotta be serious. So I've been reading this a lot. Um, I watch a lot of movies. Do you have Letterboxd? No. Okay, is... Letterboxd. It's a great app. It's like social media for movies. I'll oh really? You. I'm an unofficial Letterbox sponsor. I've deleted <laughs> all my social medias recently, like the apps, because it's just I'm on the endless scroll. Before I know it, it's 4 p.m. I haven't gone to the gym. I, I haven't done anything. I'm like, yo, I gotta I gotta get this off. But Letterbox is like you can write a diary of your movies and write your reviews oh. and check out what other people are saying about it. And so here are all the movies I've been watching recently. Uh, in January, I watched 28 movies, which nice. uh, or, <laughs> I'd like to admit, but I graduated high school recently. I got an early graduation, which was nice. So I'm, you know, I'm, oh, that's I'm more, sweet. so I'm reading Larry Moss's book. I, uh, I train in Muay Thai, which is a lot of really? fun. And yeah, because Gets the cardio going, gets the heart pumping. And if I ever Damn. feel a role where I need to learn how to fight, I'm like, well, you know, I, I have some experience in Muay Thai. Uh, I go to the gym a lot. That takes up some of my time. Uh, I'm writing a screenplay right now. Uh, okay. Between auditions, I want to keep my head in the in the acting realm. So I'm writing a script about a child actor who goes insane. It's running at like 160 pages right now, which is way too many. But uh, I want to make the argument that every page is important to the story. I mean, maybe it'll get made 10, 15 years from now. I'm not really trying to be a writer <laughs> just to keep my head in the acting. But, yeah, when I'm not acting, I'm just doing anything to keep my mind on acting. Just working on okay. auditions, going to the gym, Muay Thai, reading the book, watching a lot of movies. I watched uh, Chinatown this afternoon. Jack. Oh, Nicholson. yes, but, yes. Wow, what a good movie. Jack Nicholson. I, yeah, that, he's... he's 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 nuts I, like he's I so see, funny i see the influence that dicaprio gets from jack nicholson oh yeah watching both because 
De Niro and Jack Nicholson again are are DiCaprio's favorite actors, which I shouldn't know, but I I do know. Because uh, I feel like every male child actor, that's the archetype you want to go after. Like every kid in the acting industry has their DiCaprio face because he had the perfect career. He's having he the career. He was at the peak of acting ability and fame and everyone in the world knew him. Um, but watching a, a Jack Nicholson movies and DiCaprio movies hand in hand, I'm like, yeah, yeah I see where his tendencies came from. And it's cool <laughs> that, that he does that. Jack Jack Nicholson plays a crazy man so well. <laughs> perfect. He plays it perfectly. I watched The Shining a few weeks ago. Yeah. I was terrified. Yeah, it's... I, like you can show me the goriest, most unsettling horror movies, mm-hmm. it won't phase me. Mm-hmm. But something about Jack Nicholson's ability to play just the most unsettling human yes. being possible. <laughs> really yes. creeps me out man it's like, I need to learn how to do that that's one of my dream roles i'd love to play like a psychopath insane person like one okay nest come on because the thing is there's no limits to what you can or cannot do know. playing a crazy person because it can all be the argument that it's true to the character can be made for any decision you make because he's crazy yeah, so that to me is like having a role where there's no limits, no barriers. I'd go crazy. I'd have so much fun. I'd love to do something like that one day. You, you, you probably will. Like, like the, I you hope know, so. you're still young and <laughs> seventeen years old. So I mean, I got some time. You got, got you got, time. you got a lot, a lot a more years time. left yeah. for acting. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm sure like a crazy role or a horror role or oh, yeah. where you're playing the killer oh, yeah. or something. And, and until up. then I'll watch Jack Nicholson on repeat so I know what I'm getting into. <laughs> exactly. So what would you do if you walked on set one day and they were like, oh, you're, here's your co-star and there's Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I haven't thought about this. Um, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> just thinking about it i'm nervous man God, what would i do i don't i think i'd be so i'd probably forget my lines because i'm so hyper fixated on what he's doing yeah and because he, he's so elusive about his acting process and on one hand i'm like screw you man i want to know what you do to get into character but on the other i respect it keeps his secrets to himself but still, yeah exactly he's he's I don't know if he's a method actor or, or what. He he kind of talks about it like he is, but he also isn't. And it's so weird to me. But if I showed up and, and I was starring opposite Leonardo DiCaprio, oh my God, I don't know what I'd do. I'd, I'd <laughs> hyperfixate on everything. I had a dream about this a few months ago. About, nice. Yeah. And I forgot all my lines in the dream. And it was like <laughs> the worst nightmare I've ever had. It was really rough. I woke up in a cold sweat. So <laughs> it wasn't real. Thank God. But uh, one day, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that'd be an insane experience. I, I still I can't even think about what I do because that would be so nerve wracking, but also such a cool time. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, he is amazing. And, and I, I, you know, I'm Italian and, and like growing up watching him like yeah. another italian guy on screen oh. and it's like oh my god yeah he's all awesome. are are you italian too i'm not i'm uh i'm mexican and british i think i'm mexican oh. and like a an assortment of different caucasians but okay I'm, okay yeah. for for some reason talking to you you were you were giving off like Italian, Italian vibes, yeah. Maybe. I've been watching a lot of gang movies recently, a lot of Scorsese, a lot of Michael Mann. So I think maybe it, it's me because I I watch these movies and I have a whole new personality for the next twenty four hours. But watch <laughs> Pete, I just rewatched Goodfellas, you know, oh, Pete, The Irishman, all those movies. So maybe I'm I'm picking up on it. a lot of people think I am Italian, but I'm I'm Mexican. I speak Spanish. My mom was born and raised in Mexico, but oh uh, wow, so okay. Italian would be cool. Italian food's my favorite food in the world. I love Italian food. Well, you would definitely kill it in a mob movie or oh an God. Italian movie. Like, like you would you would definitely kill it. You definitely got the voice. I love to play a mobster. I love <laughs> it so much. 
<laughs> I, I mean, you got the chain too. I got the chain going. You, I got an assortment got the voice. of different jewelry in my jewelry box. I could put on. Hey, I'm more. I, I'm funny like a clown. I'm funny, ha ha. I can do it. I can be Joe Pesci. Exactly. Yes. Happen. You would. You would kill it. You would kill it in a mob role. I mean, I mean, no, no punt intended with killing, but you would definitely <laughs> kill it in a mob role. <laughs> I love that. That'd be the best. <laughs> And and like like you were saying, you're in amazing shape too. And and so like you must go to the gym a lot or really? like wow. <laughs> yeah. I uh I go I've gone through so many different routines with so many different trainers. I've gone to the point where I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna train whatever I feel like training until it hurts. And I'm gonna leave. And 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 it's really funny because I used to, you know, have these meticulously formed routines by you know celebrity fitness trainers and yeah and you know they were great they worked for me yeah um but but now i'm finding you know those routines would take two hours a day <laughs> you know plus the time it takes to get to the gym and the time it takes to get home now yeah exactly I'm like all right i want to train chest today so i'll do four movements three sets of each until failure it takes me 30 minutes all right i'm done i'll go and, and that's it and it's quick and it's fast and it's and it's awesome but i yeah going to the gym is like I love it. It's great. I get to listen to my music. I get to get my body pumping. I I Yo. even found a way to enjoy running on the treadmill. Oh, really? Yeah, I I just daydream about rolls. <laughs> I swear to God, it sounds crazy. Sounds like an addiction. But I daydream about future roles I'd love to play, or I think about ideas for the screenplay I'm writing, or ideas for an audition and and stuff like that. I uh, I recently. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, I saw uh, Matthew McConaughey did a little video on on some acting advice, and he talks about how you know you just reread the script, and and he said some really cool things. He's like, you know, the 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 question you get asked most as an actor is how do you memorize all those lines? Mm -hmm. he talks about how it's it's not memorizing them; it's understanding what's on the script, and you keep reading it until you understand, okay. and the memorization comes as a byproduct of that. He talks about how, you know, I read my script when I'm happy, I read my script when I'm sad, I read my script, you know. Uh, after a run when my endorphins are flowing and I started to do that a bit more. So on the treadmill, you know, when I'm out of breath and, you know, I'm drenched in sweat and my eyes are wobbling, I'll try <laughs> to you know, do my best to read the script. Cause it's, 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 you know, there's a lot of value in what he says you get in so many different situations, feeling so many different emotions. And each time you get a different outlook and you can, you know, write down what you like from the way you read it when you were feeling what you were feeling and you were doing what you were doing. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I segue to that. Yeah, I go to the gym. I like going to the gym. It's a hobby of mine. <laughs> that, 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 you know, you're 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 over there, all all sweaty, eyes rolling, ready to yeah. pass out. But you're yeah. you have a script in your hand, yeah. and that, I could picture someone at the gym saying, "Oh my god, that guy! He looks like he's about to pass out, but he's reading." <laughs> There's been so many times where I'm like, you know, using a machine, and I'm reading a script in between my sets, and ten minutes has passed. Yeah, and I got him, he's like, "Are you?" You know, are you still going? And I checked the time. Oh crap! I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm still using it. I got to put the script down and continue my set. Like, all right, I got to rush through this because you know I'm not at the table read right now. People are waiting for the machine. I'm that guy at the gym, even when I don't like to be. I am, and I hate it. But it's like an addiction. I can't not read the scripts. I've been out at like events, and I'm just like, I need to go home. I need to read. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting the shivers. I need to read. It's weird. <laughs> I, I got the I, shakes. I, don't I have books. to have the paper in my hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't read books, but I read a lot of scripts and I read acting books. I okay. figure that's that's how I, I prove my love for acting is acting is the only thing that can make me read. And I do a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's... I won't read a novel. I won't read a self-help book, but I will read a million books on Uta Hagen and Meisner and Larry Moss. I will definitely do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, what about foods? Like, Since, since you're big into to working out in the gym like do you watch what you eat or do you eat whatever you want i used to count calories and stuff like that and then i uh, i went on a trip to europe and mm -hmm. so i stopped counting calories there because i was like oh i can't do that so <laughs> i uh, i ate so much food i ate enough food to tranquilize a herd of elephants <laughs> and i came back and I was like, okay, I got to start going to the gym. But I hadn't broken my habit of eating enough to tranquilize a herd of elephants. 
So I, I was, I just, yeah, I figured as long as I'm going to the gym, you know, I can eat 10 chocolate bars. Uh, within the last few weeks, I have noticed that the abdominal area has become less and less visible. It's there, but it's a lot less, you got to use a microscope. So I'm like, you know what? I got to, I got to, I got to work out here. In October, yeah. I was like 150 something. And now okay. I'm 170 something. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not like, I like where I'm at right now, but I also, yeah, always room for improvement. So I'm, I'm again, back to counting calories. And I, so oh, okay. as I remember, it's really not, it's, I find it, oh my God, especially with Muay Thai, it's so easy to burn enough calories to where you can eat after your full two times and you still haven't eaten more than you're burned. Cause I'm telling you, Muay Thai I remember my first time going, I, I made the mistake of only showing up with one liter water bottle. Oh. And I burnt through it in about 30 minutes. I had never, I'm like, yeah, I go to the gym, you know, six times a week for the past few years. This is going to be nothing. <laughs> I was so wrong. I was so wrong. So now I go, <laughs> got two big jugs of water. I'm like, all right, let's get it, <laughs> let's get it going. But you burn so many calories doing that, that it's like, I could eat three whole turkeys and I'm still in a deficit. So what do I care? It's great. It's a lot of fun. Three whole turkeys, and I'm and I'm still fine. I mean, if you ate three whole turkeys, I think you would pass out on the floor because when you eat a little bit of turkey, you you feel like oh, yeah. going to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My appetite's not that big. You know, three whole pizzas, sure. Three whole turkeys. I'm I I I'm not cutting that. That's gonna be. Yeah. There will be exactly. no more rolls after the three whole turkeys. I will be hospitalized. <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> well i mean I'm, I'm sure with like all that the, be, between work and out and and martial arts like i'm you're you're probably all toned and have that I, I i mean you have to with 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 all of that right yeah yeah i uh i you know somehow do but I, when i was making it a goal because i used to be a little i was a pudgy little kid and then I, I lost all the weight because I hit puberty and I started, you know, going to the gym and just running on the treadmill mm -hmm. for a long time. And I got really skinny. And, I, and then I was like, you know, I kind of want to be muscular. So then I started lifting weights. Uh, and and the thing is, my goal was always like, okay, you know, I want big muscles and I want a six pack. And it was the weirdest thing. When that was my goal, I was never achieving it. But when I just made it my goal to, you know, go for fun and make it as a habit, that's when I finally yeah. started achieving my goal. I was like, so I just got to not care about it, and then the world will give it to me? That's a bit weird, but I'm not questioning your motives. You know, if it works, it works. There you go, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And, and what about sports? Like, are, are, are do you play sports or watch sports? I, uh, I grew up playing soccer. I was in a league for a few years, uh, and then the acting got really busy. Because when I was a little kid – you know, I acting was like a really great hobby of mine. And I loved doing it, but I wanted to grow up. I wanted to be messy. I wanted to be a soccer player. And, uh, and I wanted to play for Barcelona. Uh, but then oh, okay. that got really busy. So I, you know, I was like, you know, don't want to keep acting. Anymore. I want to play soccer. And I was like, yeah, I want, I want to, I want to act. You know, this, the soccer stuff is fun, but I want to act. Um, and that's when, you know, I was eight years old. Bear in mind, I was, this wasn't like three months ago. I was eight. You know, I was still playing soccer games, picking grass off the floor. But I was like, I yeah. didn't want to act. So I, I, you know, I stopped playing soccer in a league. But, yeah, I still play it for fun. I got really into basketball uh, a few years ago. I never played in the league just because, again, <laughs> the busyness doesn't allow for that. You know, if well, I, yeah, of course. I go to an in-person school, I don't think I'll be able to show up for practice at 6 in the morning. Nor do I want to show up for practice at 6 in the morning. The only thing that can make me get out of bed that early is a call time. Other than that, I'm sleeping until 2 p.m. Uh, but I, I like basketball and I like soccer. Those are those are my two sports. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and are well, who like you mentioned like about like Marvel and DC and all that. Like who's your favorite superhero and villain? I just watched the Dark Knight trilogy for the first time. I don't know why it took me 17 years of being born to do that. Probably because you know, it wasn't out for the first eight, but I don't have an excuse for the other nine. I just watched it for the first time because Christian Bale is one of my favorite actors. And, you know, yeah. I always talk because I saw, I saw Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker and I was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. that's, one best, that's one of the best performances ever. And everyone was like, oh, but Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger. I was like, 
you know, I of course know of Heath Ledger. He's a legend. Um, oh yeah, but yeah. I watched it. I, I watched it. Blown away, man. I know. I know. Wow, what a powerful actor. You know, like I saw Christian Bill talk about it in an interview. It was the only time he has ever felt nervous as an actor in his adult life because he had such a powerful actor opposite of him. Oh, he was scared that he was going to get out acted, and you know. I mean, I mean, he kind of did. <laughs> gonna lie he did i love christian bell i think he's one of the best actors of our time but heath ledger was made for that role oh my and god i feel yeah. like as bruce wayne there's only so much you could do in the mm -hmm. acting department before you gotta start you know putting on a bunch of muscle and kicking the butts of bad guys you know that's where the real character comes in well yeah but so batman is is one of my favorite superheroes the other is spider-man okay i love Man, I love Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire. I love Tom Holland. Uh, I love those movies. What else? What else? What else? Uh, the Joker. For villains, it's got to be the Joker. Oh, There's yeah, of course. Of course. I, I care to, to play than the Joker. And the thing is, you think about the Joker and you think the greatest actors have reprised that role. You have Jack Nicholson, right? The f yeah. You have, you have Heath Ledger. Yes. You have Joaquin Phoenix, and I talked to my friend Bryce about this, and he's like, that role's been played so many times. Why would you want to play that? Mm -hmm. I feel like I want to because it's motivating. You have some of the best actors in the world playing this character. I feel like the fact that, you know, these Oscar winners have played that role motivates oh, yeah. me to want to, you know, even light a candle to them. Not be better than them, because I don't think it's possible to outact them in this you know <laughs> scenario I, I i i just don't know i feel like they're they're one of a kind actors but to be able to have my name in the conversation even if it's like oh chance hersfield that guy completely got you know he's absolutely at the bottom of the list i'm taking it as a win if the top three are heath ledger joaquin <laughs> phoenix and jack nicholson the fact that i don't even That's like true. handle to them means i've <laughs> succeeded at life so I'd, I'd love to play a role like that because I feel like the fact that such good actors have played them would be motivating for me to really want to try and stand out as True. a character. Again, I don't think I would, but I, I just want to try to because why not? Yeah, exactly. Go for it. <laughs> why not? What do I have to lose? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a big horror guy, so I always ask my guests this. Like, are there any horror films that you like to watch? I really like Barbarian, actually. That I was really Batman. good. I I like that uh, a lot. Yeah, Barbarian was a really good movie. What else? What else? Oh, oh, oh the 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 Blair Witch Project. Yes, yes. That was a creepy movie. That was really unsettling. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think. What else? I love the Scream movies. The Scream movies yeah. are great. I really want to watch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't know how. That was that was good. That I, I mean, there's so many of them, but yeah, like. I'd have to look at my letterbox to see what horror movies I like. Cause I haven't been watching too many recently, but I just remember watching Barbarian like three times. And each time I was like, wow, this is a, this is a good movie. It, it, it's sick. I know it's crazy. Right. It's a great movie. <laughs> and what would be your go-to karaoke song if you were going to do one? Ooh, see, I'm a terrible singer. So I'd want a song Me that too. would you belt <laughs> as loud as possible, just cause I feel like it'd make it that much funnier. Uh, something Bruno Mars, maybe Whitney. Okay, Houston. just give me a song where the best singers show off their range, so I can humiliate myself in front of everyone. <laughs> go big or go home, right? I'm not gonna try to sound good at a song a bad singer sings. I want to sound terrible at a song <laughs> the greatest singer sings. So, there you go. Something Bruno Mars, something Michael Jackson, something Whitney Houston. Something nice. Yeah, I just kind of want to embarrass myself. So I work. <laughs> it's the best way to do it. If you can't sing, don't pretend to. Just embrace you're right. the fact you can't. You're you're absolutely right. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, there will be no Billy Joel biopics for me in the future. I don't think that's uh, that's in the cards for me. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned like tra traveling Europe and stuff. Like, is there any place you haven't seen yet you would love to go to? Oh, there's so many. Mm. In Europe or just the world in general? Well, oh, just, just, just the world, yeah. Everywhere. I'd love to go everywhere. <laughs> I'd really love to go to North Korea. Is that weird? 
I uh, love well, well, let's let's just hope everything's good because yeah. I'm, uh, you yeah. <laughs> know, so, it's so fascinating to me. God, I'd love to go to. Uh, I really want to go back to Italy. Just cause I'm really craving some good pizza. You know, Vancouver has pizza, but Vancouver doesn't have it. Nowhere has Italy pizza. Come on, New York. Just for some New York pizza. I love New York. That was, that was a. Fun. I actually saw Billy Joel live in New York. That was. Oh, that's sweet. Live in Madison Square Garden. I really want to. Damn, go to nice. Yeah, yeah. I really want to go to Germany. Uh, where else? I want to go to Greece. I auditioned for a project nice. recently that that films in Greece. Oh, so nice. I'm like, oh, I gotta move to Greece for two months. Ah, oh, it'd be such a shame. If that's, that's a shame. Oh, oh no. But but yeah, I, I want to travel everywhere in the world, man. It's just there's there's so much there's so much out there, and it's oh my god, like, yes. In the confines of my city, there's a whole universe, there's a whole world, there's a whole exactly. planet to explore. I want to go visit all of it. <laughs> I know. I feel the same same way. Like I, yeah. I don't want to be just in the United States. Like yeah. I live, I live in in Philly, and okay. and like you know, I don't want to just be in Philadelphia. Sure. Like yeah, I want to like, travel like all over, like all cultures, over the U.S., all over the world. Food, yeah, food, yeah, food, exactly. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I really want to go visit the the Buddhist monk temples. Oh, I, sweet, I, nice. I feel like every teenage boy at some point in their life wants to dedicate their life and train as a monk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's cool, man. You go. It is. You chop the wood and you punch the rocks and and I see that and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty. You're tough. like that guy is badass. And then I think <laughs> about everything else. I'm like, oh, but I couldn't <laughs> act anymore. I think I'd have to make a pledge to silence. It's not worth it. I love, love talking, but you know, until then, I'll just punch the rocks in the trees outside my house in Vancouver. That'll that'll suffice, right? All that'll right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> And the last thing I will ask you is where can fans follow you at? Instagram, uh, official chance H and, uh, and TikTok. It's just my last name. It's Hurstfield. Uh, again, I have deleted the apps recently, but knowing me, I'll have them installed on my phone by 11 PM. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've lasted like 72 hours hours so far. And I actually don't find myself craving to go back on the apps, which is uh, a surprise to say the least, but yeah, it's inevitable that, that I'm going to be back on them by the end of the month. You know, I feel like I talked to my friends about it and I feel like as an actor, it's, it's, it's your job to have social media in That's terms true. of when you have a project and you got to promote it. Um, but at the same time, I feel like if you don't have a project you have to promote or anything to talk about, you know, you don't necessarily need to be active on it. I think it's a great tool for actors to have in the modern day because that's how you solidify a fan base. You know, that's how you. Oh yeah, that. definitely. That's how people can connect with you, and and when people connect with you, you know, you get more of a fan base, which is great. Uh, so I think it's a great tool for actors to have. But I also think for the time being, I'm spending more hours than I'd like on it. So I got to just minimize that a little bit. Less time on that, and more time on this because that's uh, true. It, yeah, the more important stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah nice <laughs> well thank thank you so much for this like you're you're really thank awesome it was it was it was you. really you fun it was I really fun talking that. to you man thank you you too man i had a good time yeah definitely perfect well, i'm gonna follow you on instagram what's your instagram i'm gonna reinstall it follow <laughs> you repost the interview and then i'll delete it again <laughs> okay there you go <laughs> yeah i'll make it happen i'll make it happen <laughs> <laughs> well you know if you're ever in philly like i'll i'll show you a good a good cheesesteak place since oh, Philly's. Like i've never had a philly cheesesteak so absolutely i'd love to do that if i'm ever in philly i'll let you know okay it sounds it sounds good yeah, yeah. If you're ever in yeah, Vancouver, yeah. you let me know i'll take you out for some great knockoff italian pizza that won't <laughs> like handle to the real thing and the whole time you'll be wishing you weren't there but <laughs> It's cheese on bread with a little bit of meat and tomato sauce. So whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll definitely have a great weekend, man. Perfect. You too, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Definitely. <laughs>